searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. Searched all over, searched all over. Nobody great. Nobody great.
feels good to be back in the house of God. It feels really good. Thank you, God. Our scripture from today is coming from Hebrews 11. If you could stand in the reading, um, honor of the reading of the word. Amen. New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. And what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch, was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he reward those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child. Though she was barren and too old, she believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. A nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. You may be seated. Father God, I humbly approach the throne of grace, asking you to remove Saniah, Father God. Fill me up with your presence. Fill me with Holy Spirit so that the words that you have given to your people rest on their ears, Father God, and that they can use it in their lives, Father God, to come closer to you. Pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, Bishop came from Hebrews chapter 6 and presented to us the promise and the process. He stated that although we had made progress, learned some lessons, such as how to love, how to extend grace, how to tithe and be givers, and that many of us had learned how to wait on God, but a lot of us had not learned how to wait on God. He taught us that waiting on God does not mean you do not do anything. That waiting on God is an active process. He taught us when we wait patiently, we will obtain the promise. And if we obtain the promise any other way, 
we are not receiving the full benefit of the promise. Can you say full benefit of the promise? How many people here want the full benefit of the promise? Amen. Well, I know I want the full benefit of the promise, but to get the full benefit of the promise, you have to go through the process. So as I prepare to stand here before um, you guys, I prayed and I prayed because I always want to be in alignment with what God had for his people. And about three weeks ago, Hebrews 11 was dropped in my spirit. And when I read it for the first time, I thought, okay, this is about faith. You know, God want me to talk about faith, which makes sense. Our theme this year is faith again. It aligns with what God spoke to Bishop. So, okay, that makes sense, faith. But what about faith? So I'm steady reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. I'm not getting anything. Saturday, last Saturday, July 18th, God spoke to me and he gave me three questions. He said, can your faith welcome the promise? Will your faith have a legacy? And will your faith produce a failed promise or a fulfilled promise? Now I have these, I had these three questions on Saturday night. So I'm like, okay, now I got somewhere to go. Then Sunday, last Sunday, Bishop stood up and preached from Hebrews 6. And he preached the promise and the process. And it just began to flow. Now, I know how God talked to me, and I know it's different for everyone, but hopefully you know how he talked to you. But the ways that God talked to me is through Jael, my daughter, my mother, his word, the Holy Spirit, and my bishop. So whenever, and it never fails, whenever I stand up to preach, whenever I'm studying, and we can be having a conversation and he'll say one thing in the words, it's just start to flow. It's like God, just I can hear his voice. So that let me know that Hebrews 11 was right where I needed to be. Right where I needed to be. Because when he introduced to us the promise and the process, it was confirmation that God was speaking to me about what he wanted his people to hear. God's message for the house does not stray from what the shepherd of the house has spoken. In 2021, we were told that we will faith again this year. Last Sunday, we were taught in order to obtain the promise, we have to endure the process. Do you know what the process is, church? No? Yeah? Okay, well, I'm getting ready to tell you what the process is. The process is developing your faith. So how do we develop our faith? Well, I'm glad you asked. Did you ask? Well, if you didn't ask, I'm gonna tell you. This is how you develop your faith. You go through tests, you go through trials, you go through waiting periods, and you go through battles. Our faith is developed when we go through trials, when we go through tests, when we go through the waiting period and when we go through battles. And I'm gonna say it again, because I don't think you've heard me. Our faith is developed when we go through trials, when we go through the tests, when we go through the waiting period and when we go through the battles. In Hebrews 11, the scripture tell us that it was by faith that Abel won favor with God. It was by faith that Enoch pleased God. It was by faith that Noah built the ark, and it was by faith that Abraham followed God. It was by faith that Sarah and Isaac had Isaac by the scripture, and I also believed and welcomed the promise. So he's telling us all these people, it was by faith, it was by faith. There are good examples of faith, but these people were not born with this faith. So how did they get this faith? That was my question. So how did they get the faith? You're not born, you don't come out the womb, oh, I believe, I'm, 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 it's all whatever God say, I'm not going to falter, I am the great example of faith. No, they had to go through tests, they had to go through trials, they had to go through waiting periods, and they had to go through battles, but they did not falter, and that's how they became those great examples of faith. So as I'm asking God, okay, how did they get this faith? 
it made me go back to the scripture in that last verse when it says they welcomed the promise. That's our first step in getting the faith. Because when you welcome the promise, that means you believe. If you don't believe, you can't welcome any faith. Because that's the first part of faith. You got to believe. You got to believe that God is God. You got to believe that Jesus died on that cross for your sins. So if you can't welcome the promise, you forfeit your promise. If you can't welcome the promise, you can't go through the process. And going through the process is how your faith is developed. And if your faith is not developed, you don't get the promise. And that's a dangerous place to be. You just live and you just hear. You're not, you're not getting the promise. And that's not where we want to be. So the first step in developing your faith is welcoming the promise. How do you welcome the promise? You say, God, I believe in you. I believe that what you said will happen, will happen. And even though I don't see it, I don't see any evidence of it, I believe. That is how you welcome the promise. That's the first step. So when you welcome the problem, promise, that's your first step in developing your faith. And remember, the only way you're going to develop your faith is if you go through the process. You can't get to the promise without going through the process. Every last person in this, in this chapter that is a great example of faith have went through the process of developing their faith. Now y'all said y'all wanted the promise, right? You want the full promise, right? So in order to get the full promise, the first thing you have to do is believe that God is God. Do we have any believers in the house? Now, this is the beginning of the process, developing your faith. You, you can't faith again if you can't welcome the promise. You cannot go through the process if you cannot welcome the promise. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that, but I need you to understand you cannot develop your faith if you don't believe in God. In order to welcome the promise, you have to believe the promise. Shout believe the promise. Okay, I just wanted to make sure y'all were still there. The whole purpose of the process is to develop your faith. A process has a beginning and an end. In God's process, there is always a purpose, okay? Always a purpose. And part of that purpose is the promise. But the other part of God's purpose for the process is developing our faith. When our faith is developed, we can encourage someone else with our testimony and God get the glory. And that is why we're, we were created to give God glory, amen? When we are going through the process developing our faith, we are operating in God's will. That is a part of the promise, our faith being developed. And the start of that process is believing in God's promise. If you believe God is faithful, if you believe God is righteous, if you believe God is not a man and he don't lie, if you believe God has good thoughts towards you and that you have a future, then you have started the process of developing your faith. Congratulations to you. Because just like Abe, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Joseph, you can welcome the promise. And this is not an easy thing to do, church. You will be surprised how hard it is for people to believe that God is God. It is hard for them to welcome the promise that, and if they can't welcome it, we already know they're forfeiting a promise, and that's a dangerous place to be. It's people you work with, people you sit next to, people you next to in line, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in God, so they don't get the full benefit of the promise. And that's the most important thing before you can even start this journey, is you have to believe. Amen? Okay, so we've established the first step 
and developing our faith and welcoming the promise. Okay, now that we have welcomed the process, we've welcomed it, okay, we welcome it, God, we believe, now it's time to go through this development piece. That's the question. Are we able to withstand the development of our faith? You will be able to faith again and so much more, but can you withstand it? When your faith is developed, you gain a skill set that prepares you for spiritual warfare. Developing your faith equips you for battle. Developing your faith provides your offspring with a rich legacy. Which brings me to my second question. Will your faith leave a legacy? Will your faith leave a legacy? In Hebrews 11, the scripture states that by faith, Abel not only pleased God with his gift, but his story still speaks to us today. In 2021, we're still talking about Abel and the gift that he gave to God because of his faith. Enoch pleased God and was faithful, and his story still speaks to us today. By faith, Noah trusted God, and his story still, still speaks to us today. By faith, Abraham and Sarah had descendants as far as the stars can go. Thousands of years later, the story still speaks to us today. This is a legacy of faith. Now, how many sitting here today, right now, can say that when you are dead and gone, that your legacy will continue, that your descendants will continue to speak about your developed faith and how you were a great example? And they will use your example to pass on to their children and their children and their children. And thousands of years later, they will still be speaking about your faith. That's a part of the promise. But your faith has to be developed to get there. Just like the great examples in Hebrew 11, they had to have their faith developed to get to this point. Now... Studying this word, I learned there were five things that develop faith. So when your faith is developed, you produce these five things. I cannot believe my time is almost gone. I think y'all sped that up. I, I, I'm going to get this out because I don't know when I'm getting back up. So, so y'all might as well start it again because <laughs> Bishop just going to have to, okay. Studying this word, I learned these five things that develop faith. Faith produces patience, courage, knowledge, wisdom, and joy. These things are developed through the process. If you have these five things, patience, say patience, courage, knowledge, wisdom, and joy. This will help you create a legacy of faith that will pass on from generation to generation. These five things, patience, courage, knowledge, wisdom, and joy will bless you with a skill set for spiritual warfare. In order to get to these five things, you have to go through the process of developing your faith. Abel had to do it. Enoch had to do it. Noah had to do it, Abraham had to do it, Sarah had to do it, and Isaac had to do it. There's no way to get around it. In order to get those things, your faith has to be developing. You have to go through the process. Trust me, not one of them, I name, came out the womb with faith just popping only. Not one. Not one of them. They had to go through the development. They had to experience some tests, trials, and waiting periods. And I will prove it to you. Abraham is a perfect example. I'm just going to use Abraham for the sake of time. Now, we look at Abraham. He is this great man of faith that we know. And however, he had to be developed. It was a process. It began when Abraham welcomed the promise. So God spoke to Abraham. He said, Abraham, gather your people. Go to this foreign land. I'm going to bless you. You're going to have descendants. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, so Abraham said, okay, God, I believe you. Let's go pack up the tent. They riding. So as they're riding, they settle in Canaan. But then famine comes. So Abraham like, whoa, I don't remember this being a part of the promise. So 
So Abraham like, all right, I'm going to take my people and we're going to go to Egypt. So they go over to Egypt because it's the land of plenty at the time. And so Pharaoh sees Sarah. He's like, oh, Sarah, you home. What's up with Sarah? Abraham's scared to say Sarah his wife. So he's like, oh, that's my sister. Sarah, tell him you my sister. Sarah go along because she's following her man. So she go to the Pharaoh house, and now all these things start popping out. People dying, ox falling over, and they're like, well, what's going on? None of this happened to that Sarah chick came. Hmm. So Pharaoh, even though he's Pharaoh, clearly he knew, knew God some way. He was like, she got to go. And he sent her back, took her folk. And not only did he send her back, he sent her back with gifts. Like, hunt to get your people and y'all get out of here. Now, the thing in this is that Abraham faltered in his faith. Even though he believed and welcomed the, prom the promise, he did not trust God. He left Canaan, went to Egypt he, with people he's not supposed to be with. How many times we do that? Doing things you're not supposed to do. But God, because his promise, this is, the promise is bigger than us. That's the other part. The promise is bigger than us. But because God knows this promise got to come forth, he protected Abraham in his foolishness. And he sent them back, and he sent them back with gifts. But that is an example of how that faith has to be developed, because Abraham knew it was wrong. He had to repent. He had to ask for forgiveness, but God still covered him. So that's a, that should be a praise for you to know that even when you falter in your faith, as long as you go back to God and repent and say, Lord, I forgive me, he's still going to cover you along the way in developing your faith, because remember, the promise is bigger than us, okay? He, offer, he give us the promise, but it's more to it than that. So Abraham get back to where he's supposed to be, and he keep going through his track of being this great example of faith. He's the perfect example because Abraham faith again and again and again and again. Which leads me to my last question. Will your faith lead you to a failed promise or a fulfilled promise? So far, we have learned that if we welcome the promise, we are on the path of developing our faith, which means we are in the process of obtaining the promise. If we believe, that means we will go through trial, tests, tribulations, and waiting periods. But don't look at them as trial, tests, and tribulations. Look at them as my faith is being developed and I am filling my spiritual toolbox because as you go through those trials, tests, and tribulations, you are gaining patience. Because Abraham had to wait how long for Isaac? So he, he gained that patience. That patience was developed. They gained courage. He stopped being scary, giving his wife off to other people. He learned to have courage. He gained knowledge and wisdom, and he gained joy. When our faith is developed, we will be able to navigate through the process and receive a fulfilled promise and not a failed promise. Abraham had to wait. Patience. Abraham was afraid, and God continued to test him until it turned into courage. Through all his trials and tribulations, Abraham gained knowledge, and God gave him wisdom on how to apply the knowledge so he did not make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And Abraham was able to take a piece of the promise, taste a piece of it, because of his faith. And that was the birth of Isaac, which was his joy. Now, I want to go back to verse 13, because I got to get this part out. So we can answer this question of failed promise or fulfilled promise. Verse 13 states that all these people died still believing that God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. Now, this is when it's bigger than us. It's not that they, not, they didn't receive their promise, because I don't want to, I need to clear this up so you are clear. It's not that they did not receive their promise, because they did. They received their promise. What they did not receive was redemption. And that's because Christ had not come yet. So God fulfilled the earthly promise because of their faith, and they welcomed in the distance the promise 
of redemption. That's what they was welcoming because we, we have access to redemption. They didn't have it. Now that's good news, church. Y'all should be shouting. We have access to redemption. We have the earthly promise and the heavenly promise of redemption. Now that is something to shout about. How can you not shout about the fact that God has offered you of a promise of eternal life in his kingdom? If Abraham can go through the process and didn't have that, we can definitely go through the, pro the process and get our faith developed. Listen, Abraham is just like you and me. We are not perfect, neither was Abraham. But he submitted to the development. But are we willing to submit to the process and let God develop our faith? And if we do, we will be able to faith again. We will be able to welcome the process. We will be able to have a legacy of faith. We will be able to have a fulfilled promise and not a failed promise. Listen. It is written in his word. It is right here in Hebrews 11. Look at it. Put up Hebrews 11. Put it up. Hurry up. My time's going. Put it up. I'm telling you, when I read this chapter, my spirit jumped because it's right here in God's word. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That we, what we now see, did not come from anything that can't be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man. And God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. But before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that come by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and to go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundation and city designed and built by God. It was by faith even Sarah was able to have a child. Though she was barren, it was too old she believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was good as dead. A nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. There is no way to count them. All these people died still believing. They died. What God had promised. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promise, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son to whom your descendants will be killed. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his son, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, you God, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship. As he leaned on his staff, it was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take 
religious bones and deal with their love. It was by faith that Moses carried how him for three months when he was born. That is how that God had given him an unusual child. from your own experience that it was by faith. Come on, that's your word for this week. It was by faith, it was by faith, it was by faith, it was by faith. Hallelujah, we bless the Lord. 
for using Elder Sanai McBride on this morning. Amen. Come on, can we give God a hand clap of praise just for the word that have came forth on this morning? It was by faith. It was by faith. Now listen, if you are in the house or you are joining us virtually and you don't know Jesus, we need you to take your first step of faith and, 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 and come out from where you are, come out from that place of sin and say, I want a new relationship. I want new life with him. If, if that is you and you are worshiping virtually, please, at this time, send an email to the Citadel Church Jacks at gmail.com. Let us know that on today, you chose to utilize your faith. You chose to establish it in the Father. If you are here in the house this morning, you're joining us. If you don't know Jesus, just go ahead and lift your hand right where you are. One of our elders or our leaders will come to you and lead you to the Lord. Amen. If you are joining us virtually or here in the house, if you decide to let the Citadel is where I want to call my home. Again, virtually, send us an email to the Citadel Church Jacks at gmail.com. If you are here in the sanctuary and you want this place to be your home, if you want to plant your roots, I think this is, this is good ground. It's a good place to call home. We would love to have you. Amen. Can we just go before God in prayer? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you. God, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. God, we thank you for the word that came forth on this morning. God, we pray, Father God, that you allow the word just to penetrate our hearts, Father God. Lord, that we can take it and apply it to our lives, Father God, after we go throughout our week, Father God. Remind us, Father God, as we leave this place, Lord, the keys to developing our faith, Father God. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. God, we pray right now a special prayer upon your servant, Father God. We pray that you restore to her all the virtues that have been poured out on this morning. Build her up right now and strengthen her, Father God. Lord, that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. Come on, would everybody please put your hands together and offer up to God another praise. Hallelujah. As we are making ready to depart this house on today, I'd like to welcome you. Thank each and every one of you for coming out. Thank you for joining us virtually. Our next opportunity to gather will be, well, we won't be having a Bible study this week due to Holy Convocation. Amen. So that our next point of gathering will be next Saturday morning during our breakfast bread prayer call. Please make sure that you are tuning in. We can start it off in the right way with our breakfast bread. Amen. Again, we're standing all over the house and we're making ready to depart. We ask God's blessing upon our bishop, and our first lady, and those that will be going down to Orlando to participate in the United Church of Christ Holy Convocation. We ask that you keep us all lifted in prayer. Amen. Now let's go before God. Father God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for showing up in this place. God, we thank you for your presence. Now, Father, as we leave this place, we pray that we don't leave your presence. God, be with us. Keep us all safe and covered to the appointed time for us to return. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Go with God. <laughs>